Hi, this is Quinn from How To Q. Today on this episode, we are tracking down a small gas leak. I say small because it's actually been here for a little bit and we're finally taking the time to track it down. My sister-in-law had a gas leak at her house. The guy that she paid to track down the gas leak actually left one of these TIFF 8800A permissible gas detector. <laughs> Never used one of these before, but they're pretty easy. The instructions are right on the side, and I'm gonna take you through that right now. So check this one out. Okay, I'm assuming if you're watching this video that you have a known small gas leak and you know the general area of where it's coming from. Uh, if you're watching this video and you are wrapped in gas fumes in your home, run away, um, call the gas company, call, call non-emergency, emergency number, um, depending on how bad you think it is. But the gas company, when they show up, will sh the first thing they do for is tell you to leave your house and then they're gonna shut off your gas. So again, this is for those of you who have a known small gas leak and you know the general vicinity. There's two ways to track it down. You've got these sniffers, and then you've also got liquid leak detector. This is called all-purpose leak de detector by Master Plumber, made in the USA. Uh, Ace Hardware, $10. Uh, there's one at Home Depot that's five. I'll leave links to that in the description of this video. This is your, this is your immediate cheap way to track down leaks, um, especially if they're accessible. Um, if they're not that accessible, you're gonna need one of these because um, you not only have, do you have to have access to it, but you gotta be able to see the bubbles. Um, if you have small foamy bubbles, it's a small leak. Big bubbles, big leak, so remember that. Um, I did need this and I'm gonna show you how I tracked it down and where I found it right now. So we'll, we'll check that out now. So obviously the first thing you do is you're gonna wanna turn this on and the dial on the right um, you're going to want to turn all the way counterclockwise when you start. It kind of goes through this self-test when it starts up. All the lights work. Everything works great. Um, so you've got to wait about a minute. While I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the sniffer. When you're working in tight spaces and you need to bend around things, it's kind of nice to have this little extension. Also on the back, you have a receptacle that you can plug it in to recharge the battery, which is right there. So you don't need to have it plugged in all the time. And then the next thing you want to do is slowly increase that sensitivity. And I'm going to let you listen to what it sounds like. You're going to have to end up playing with this. So you just basically get this more rapid knocking. And I can only let you listen to it for you to figure it out. So that was about what you want to hear. You're going to end up playing around with this to get it to the right sensitivity. So play around with it and you'll eventually figure it out. If you guys don't have, if you don't have one of these, who does unless you do this for a living, I would go to a big box store, buy one of these, find your leak if you want to track it down yourself, DIY of course, and then take it back and get your money back. You'll probably never use it again. How often do these happen? So one of the things that they talk about is they being TIFF, the maker of this is go to a known gas source, known gas source stove. Um, I'm going to pass, of course, the ignite portion and just get the gas going. And I'm going to test to make sure that this little sniffer works. And it works. And of course, it just went blasted off. It just maxed out those lights. So I'm going to turn that off real quick. And now we're gonna go into the pantry and track, at down, track down that leak. So this is the pantry. Anytime we open up this door, I can smell gas. Um, it's a faint gas smell, but it's definitely there. And of course, once I open up the door, it goes away because I've introduced all this air into the pantry and it goes away. So um, let's go into the pantry and we're gonna track down the water heater. All right, so here's the water heater. There's two connections, one in the front, one in the back. I'm gonna kind of zoom in here a little bit with the camera and show you that front connection. And then I'm gonna struggle a little bit to get to the back, but I wanted you to see this before I actually got the TIFF 8800A back there. <laughs> but that's the connection that's in the wall. I'm hoping it's the front, but 
as most projects go, I'm sure it's the one in the back. Now I'll go behind the water heater and I'll let you listen to the 8800A. And here's what it looks like on the 8800A. All right, now I'm going to try and illustrate the liquid leak detect. It's pretty hard to see. If you look closely, you'll see really tiny bubbles, which means it's a small leak. What was nice about the TIFF 8800A, <laughs> I, I swear I'm not being paid by them, um, I could isolate which joint it was. With the liquid leak detect, this would have been tough because you've got really tiny bubbles coming from that top joint, and it's actually falling to the lower joint. So it might have been tough to tell without the uh, without the sniffer that I used for this job. So it was really nice to have. Okay, it's now time to call the plumber. I'm willing to pretty much try anything, as you can tell from the other videos I've done, but I don't really screw around with gas. So I'm gonna have him take care of that. All right, first let me apologize about the camera angle. I don't have my tripod, but I wanted to show you where the leak was coming from and why we had a leak. All right, so the leak was coming from right here. This was the connection going into the wall. That was totally fine. Uh, we found the leak here. And let me just unscrew this and show you what we have. We have a half inch outside diameter flared fitting into a manual shutoff valve. Um, I'm not a plumber, but this one made sense to me when my plumber explained it to me. When you screw this in, you can see that it moves right there. But you know what? You can kind of ignore that because if we tighten it up, it actually feels like you get a good connection. But this is not a good connection. This is like putting a circle into a square hole and saying that it fits, okay? We are seeing more and more of this around our area. I live in Phoenix. Um, do an inspection on your house. If there are electrical issues or plumbing issues, get those inspected by a plumbing inspector or an electrical inspector. Um, my plumber has a million dollar flip going on next door to him and the concrete guy is doing all the plumbing. Uh, the plumber is doing all the electrical work. Um, they're just whoever was the cheapest and how the developer can make the most money, that's the way they do it. Um, this guy was clueless all around. He probably didn't even know what a mistake he had made, but you know, um, luckily uh, we found it and fixed it. Um, could have been a lot worse. So um, let's finish up this video, pretty sad. This was pretty easy to use. Play around with the sensitivity and have a known gas source to check it out before you start running around sniffing for your leak. Hope this helps you in your job. I learned something today, I hope you did too. If you did, please comment. I would appreciate it if you liked this video and would love for you to subscribe to my channel, How To Q. I've got plenty of other DIY videos you can check. Thanks for watching this edition. We'll talk to you next time.